Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Happy Sunday, hope you're all smashing it well today. We've got our quick review on the E92 330D. So we're gonna have a quick walk around, get it out on the road and see how she performs. Right, so as we can see guys, it's the M Sport model, which comes with M Sport bumpers. You've got the 19 inch M Sport wheels on this. Obviously M Sport suspension, so it sits a bit nicer. You've got the M Sport sills. A little spoiler on the back. The M Sport rear bumper. Right, so as we have a little look inside, we've got the M Sport sill strips, which are always a nice touch. We've got the red Dakota leather, which is heated electric, and we've also got the electric bolsters like our more modern versions um got the m sport steering wheel this is a six speed auto we've got the paddle shifts um this is a sat nav car so we also have an early i drive system got the premium stereo and if we have a little look in the back it's like a two plus two so sadly you're not getting another person in the middle there or it's going to be really uncomfortable but this is a really nice spec car for the age so let's get in it have a little spin and see how she performs right guys so we're out in the e91 330d m sport as per usual we've got tom at the helm all right right so we're just going to do our little honest drive review on this motor um so a bit about the car first so this is the pre-lci version which ran from 2006 to 2008 um this is a 231 brake horsepower version with 368 pound of torque which is 500 newton meters and it is that classic m57 good old reliable motor if you go for the lci version we ran that from 2010 to 2013 which came with a little bit more power 245 brake 385 pound of torque or 383 Drop in the comments if you know your stuff exactly. 520 newton meters of torque. So this model, and it states, and I had a little look through a few websites, but the common consensus of the 0 to 60 time is 6.3 seconds, and it's limited to 155 with a combined fuel economy of 43 miles per gallon. What is the car actually doing, Tom? Miles per gallon? Uh, let me just get around this corner so I can have yeah. a look. It's actually showing 37.6, but to be honest, that's probably the way the missus drives it. <laughs> <laughs> like she stole it. Yeah, well, she has to say she So goes. what type of journeys is she doing to achieve that 37? Um, she's doing, it's probably to Warrington and back pretty much every now and, well, a couple of times a week. So, a week. so what's that, about 30, 30 odd yeah, miles about 30 each miles. way, so 60 yeah, miles so that's, journey. That's somewhere. not too bad. Right, so how long have you had? this car now uh, we've had this car for just over three years and what did you pay for it uh, we paid for eight for it I think I think it was up, it was up for about five two uh, but we managed to knock them down a little bit bit of haggling uh, bit I of haggling. got it for four eight so I had a quick look on eBay last week and these are kind of hit and miss with the mileage <laughs> I saw an LCI version which was 2010 and they wanted 11 grand for that car. Hell, I might sell it again, yeah. you one. <laughs> Expensive. Um, yeah. But the, obviously pre-LCI versions are still knocking around about five to six grand. So it's still good money. And I think the cheapest one I could find was about, I think it was about 3,800, but that had literally been to the moon and back. Yeah. So they're still, they're holding the money good condition one you are going to pay for it but they are solid cars and like this this is pretty much the top spec as you've seen previously it's got the sat nav screen it's got heated seats heat bolsters the lecky seats premium stereo it's, it's fully loaded for a three series so it is a nice spec car yeah that's that's why we wanted it it was mainly for the, yeah. the sat nav in the middle well, you don't yeah. see many 
with um, with the sat nav through you. And it is, it's a decent size screen, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're hopefully looking to upgrade it to the Apple CarPlay. But yeah, we'll, yeah, uh, yeah. That's another video, isn't it? Another video. Maybe for Christmas if she's lucky. <laughs> if she's lucky. Yeah, if she's lucky. <laughs> there you go, love. <laughs> One of them uh, made up. Um, so, we're going to have a quick go. It's a bit damp today, so we can't do anything too crazy. Well, another too, yeah. interesting, well, yeah, speed limits. Tom did a quick VIN check before on this car, and we put both of our beamers in the F30 and F31 and it gives a full rundown of the spec now this is a um, 231 horsepower brake horsepower um, but on the VIN check it said what was it 286 yeah it said it's the M57 T2 engine and it said it was 286 brake which uh, to be honest I don't, don't quite believe that yeah one. so but if any of you out there have um, Got a 286 horsepower 330. Or know a bit more than us. Know a bit more than us. Drop in the comments because this car, it has been mapped, hasn't it? Yeah, we've had it mapped. DPF delete, EGR delete on it. Um, should be well. When they did it, he said it was round about 300 horsepower. Which sounds about right, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, I think I think most of them they say it's normally round about 200, 280. Yeah, 280. Depends, you know, there's normally, when you look at mappers, there's normally... Yeah, it's a bit of discrepancy, 10, isn't it? It wasn't done on a rolling road, road so. Yeah, just a generic map. Yeah. Um, but it's one of them. These cars are still half decent. And when you look at the bodywork on this, compared to the E46, it has it it is aging better. Yeah, well, there's the not the as much rust as get the classic back out. I know, it's, it's a shame, and... but... So if you're looking for a BM, it's not going to cost the world, but it's still going to be in reasonable condition and not rotten. You know, the 92 is a decent car. Like I always wanted the M3 in this this yeah. shape. This is the one one of the beamers I've missed out on. I dreadedly went to Audi for for two terms and yeah, um, had some nice I, Audis then. I know, I know, I know. But I'm glad to be back in a BM. It's where my heart is where the heart is so maintenance tom is this car cost the world to run is it reliable not, not, is it not really well you, you've got to bear in mind it's on what hundred and fifty four thousand miles um i think last year we did the front top mounts front suspension top mounts on a little gas here lad let's feel it oh yeah it's got poke on it yeah, well, that's it. On a Moss Road mode, again, yeah. guys. Put it sport mode, only up to 60. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, it's very it, responsive, isn't it? Yeah, so we did the uh, front top mounts on it. Um, recently, we've had both front springs done because the springs had snapped on it. So was that um, all in one, the springs? No, the no, it mount? wasn't. As I say, we did the top mounts, but I, I imagine the springs have gone with uh, with compressing them, you know, to do the top mounts. And if yeah. there's been a bit of rust on them, it's just, just fatigued and gone. So that's the uh, the most recent one. Um, as I say, we, we had it about a year and it came up with a DPF, uh, which is why we got it deleted and, and what have you. I had a go at cleaning it. I didn't take it off, just took the um, uh, Lambda sensors out, sprayed all your, your spray in it, ran it. Yeah. Didn't, it cleared it for a bit, but it came back. Obviously, Liz does mileage. Surprised so. it's done that with mileage. Yeah, well, I mean, she's always done the mileage in it, so. We, it's not uh, like she's just tootling around town, innit? It is getting opened up a bit, innit? Yeah, so when we uh, when I took it in, I was going to get it clean, but in the end decided to just get it deleted. So it looks standard. It's just had the internals taken out, re-welded back up. Uh, at the same time, we did the EGR delete, got it mapped. Um, she just thought we might as well yeah. while, it's, uh, while we're getting the DPF done. A bit more poke and a bit better fuel economy, yeah. isn't it? Other than that, I don't think, uh, no, it's not really had anything else other than, we've, well, we've done the front wishbones and stuff like that, which you'd expect on the mileage of the car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it only needed a drop link, but I went I went crazy and did all the bloody... So you did that yourself? Yeah, yeah. I did it all myself, cost a fortune, can't believe how many bloody linkage arms there are on the front end, but, you know, <laughs> that's BMW, German engineering yeah. for you. Good old Germans. But at least, at least it's not, you know, she yeah. does the mileage, so I know it's not, not going to need to be done again so that's all good then so all in all pretty reliable 
just yeah. general wear and tear, isn't it? Yeah. Other than that, obviously oil changes, which is what you'd expect to be honest. There's been nothing, nothing major. So the major one was the DPF, but it didn't cost a fortune to sort. And to be honest, it goes better. Yeah. So if I think they've got a bit more of a, a tone to them. These. So you know, like ours, they don't sound bad, but. Yeah. I kind of like the straight six tractor noise. I feel yeah. like they've got a bit of girth to them. No, it's a nice car, really, really nice to drive. I'll say we'll get you in the driving seat in a bit and you can uh, I know, see how missed it out generation. Right. Obviously, with the auto as well. So, um, yeah, so it's the six speed, so it's not. I think our R8 speeds are a little bit nicer. Like. Yeah, they're going to set F8 will change gear a lot yeah. better. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention, did now we um, we did actually get the gearbox uh, oil done. Yeah, right. we did got an oil change on it. I say I think I mentioned in previous videos, Liz was saying it was just holding the gears a little bit. Um, so we got that done. I think it was about six hundred odd quid to get that done. But I mean, you, you need to get that it's, done anyway, it's don't you? Though, it's, it's, it? You know, to present uh -huh. preventative maintenance. Really. Yeah. So. so all in all, it's not really. It's not really been a bad car, has it, for, what, 150 odd thousand? Like, obviously, this is low mileage compared to the 46. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you haven't already se uh, seen that video, check the um, RE46 review out on Tom's 330D. That car has been to the moon and back. Yeah. Check that out. Still going strong, though. Still going strong. That's why we like them. Aye. So, yeah, if you're in the market for a, for a 30D, the old uh, E92. Obviously, if you've got kids, we don't recommend the coupe because obviously it is like a two plus two. Boot space isn't bad in these, but you're only getting, you know, like Tom. Tom sat. He's, you know, decent height and still a good whack of leg room in the back there. So you could probably comfortably get four adults in one of these. But you know, if you've got yeah, you three kids, you don't buy a two door for space, do you? I've, really? own two doors when I have chills <laughs> seat yeah. forward in the back go on because you just like they just look I think they look better but um I don't know I kind of contradict myself there because if I was looking at um you know like an F80 M3 newer M3s I would go for a I would go for a four door over a two door it's getting I older though isn't it? I think they look better it's like I, I really like the Torrens now I never used to like I know, them I'm a big fan of the Torrens so <clears throat> So right, so we're going to find somewhere to pull in and I'm going to have a little go nice. this beastie, okay. so let's do a changeover. Right guys, so I am at the helm of the night 2 30 diesel M Sport. And I've just had a quick drive then and it does, it does feel, it feels nice, it feels planted. Mm. Um, and we were just talking about the, the evolution between the, the 46. Well, the 46 was the uh, the last classic cockpit face in the driver, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And then it's all kind of gone flat. Yeah. Even though I really like these ones, especially with the, uh, the sat nav in the middle. They feel, that is, yeah. That's one thing I would go for. Well, they feel a lot chunkier and, dare I say, better made inside. You know? mm. It's like, and we were saying the steering wheel, this M Sport steering wheel compared to our F30, F31, it feels and looks a bit smaller yeah. and a bit chunkier. Well, um, I think the steering's meant to be a little bit more responsive on these than the, uh, than the F series. Well, ours are electric, aren't yeah. they? I'm not sure. So these, are, these are still hydraulic, Ooh, I think. Easy. Yeah, but all in all, it feels, it feels planted now. This is my dilemma here, this is running 19s, now obviously I'm running 18s on my uh, F30 and I'm in two minds with it to stick with 18s or go for 19s, but this isn't running run flats and obviously we're on moss roads here yeah. and it is a bit, it is quite, quite it's a bumpy, bit isn't it? bone shaker. Now I am majority motorways, bypasses, long gay roads. So I don't know, but it's not. I kind of like having that thicker sidewall. Well, the night the nineteens look nicer, don't they? They look great. Right? Yeah, they do look great. The bigger wheels always look nicer on anything. They like do. But they do. It's what's practical at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, let's get onto a bit of a straight up here. A bit, a bit of gas. And see. See what she feels like. Mm. Semi kick down. 
very responsive. Obviously, this one's matte DPF gutted. Um, it's got bags of torque. I'd be interested to see what manual feels like because your manual 30 D feels good. It does. It does. It does take off. It's different driving a manual though, isn't it? But I would I'd, definitely I'd, say. I'd, I've always preferred the manuals just because you've kind of you feel like you're in a bit more control. And I always notice with, a, with a, uh, an auto, you seem to be braking more, you know, when you come up to yeah. traffic lights, because yeah. you can't use the engine braking as much, so. It's one of them, you know, manuals are gonna be a thing of the past soon. Not many car yeah. manufacturers are, are building them, like, uh, I know where I work at Jag Land Rover, we only make one manual Range Rover Evoque now, the rest are all automatic. give this pure gas obviously not <laughs> being my car but i'd be fishtailing down the road yeah obviously we have got a lot of farm muck it is damp and there's salt on the road but all in all oh it's a good car a, i really like car. it i i always I always enjoy it every time i uh, take it out but the only time i normally take it out is when you know when liz has said there's a noise coming from yeah. it or something well talking of noises yeah um, wheel bearing that could be um yeah well there's a, there's a maintenance slight, based uh based video coming up there there's a slight noise coming so i think it's the front drivers but to be honest if i'm going to do it i'll change both of them that's it might as well i always do them in pairs two birds with one right. stone and all that all right so my conclusion on the e92 um probably spend a bit of money extra money on one you know they do it tend to age better than 46s there's yeah. not as much rust on the on the bodywork um and you know this has got 150,000 miles on you know you don't necessarily need to look for a lower mileage car as long as that maintenance has been performed and it's got some form of service history whether it's an independent or full bmw service it's going to go forever yeah so well, I, suppose, I mean the thing is is if you're looking at selling it on and it's low mileage you definitely want to get it done at you know stamped and what have you if it's yeah. high mileage and you're, you're keeping it just do it yourself make sure you do it regular in intervals well that's it isn't you it? know the car so that's it so you know any quarrels about uh, you know the 92 I won. This has been a great car for Tom and his missus for the yeah. last three years. Um, and if it was rubbish, we'd tell you. Yeah, we would have got rid of it, to be honest. So <laughs> we'd tell you. It, but... um, and likewise, with all these cars, if they are going to become nightmares, we're going to be honest and tell you that yeah. they're a pain in the bum. But well, that's it. Well, I've, a minute, I've... touch the fake wood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> touch the fake wood. Um, yeah go for it there's not many of them for sale mm. i think when i checked on ebay there was probably only about six or seven for sale so they are dying out same with like the 46s so yeah guys that's our little uh drive review on the um the old 92 yeah and we'll uh we'll see you in the next video so please like and subscribe Follow our journey. We'll catch you later. <laughs> See you later.